Spinal SAQ34 Mid-Face Fracture A 23-year-old man is brought to the emergency department following an assault in a nightclub. He appears to have suffered significant mid-face fractures and is uncooperative with staff. You are asked to accompany him to the CT scanner. A. Outline the immediate management plan for this patient. This is an emergency trauma situation. I will assess and manage the patient simultaneously following an ABCDE approach. Call for help from senior anesthetic and ODP support and maxillofacial or ENT colleague. Obtain difficult airway trolley. Airway. Patient should adopt a position that is comfortable for breathing. Administer oxygen 15 liters per minute via non rebreathing bag. Check for airway obstruction by blood, teeth or bone. Pull mid-face forward if posteriorly displaced mid-face fracture causes loss of airway. Be prepared for potential bradycardia due to vagal stimulation when the zygoma fracture is reduced. Indications for immediate intubation include dyspnea, stridor, drooling and voice change, cervical spine control due to possible associated injury. Consider cervical collar. Breathing. Assess for associated injuries. Auscultate and palpate the chest. Assess bilateral chest movement with respiration and palpate the trachea. Monitor oxygen saturations and respiratory rate. C. Cardiovascular. Ensure large bore IV access available. Obtain blood for cross-match, FBC, renal profile and blood sugar. Hypovolemia is rarely caused by mid-phase fractures, but the patient may have other injuries causing blood loss. Assess and treat for hypovolemia, hypoxia, acidosis, electrolyte imbalances, hypothermia, intoxication, tamponade, tension pneumothorax, thrombosis or other trauma, disability. Patient is uncooperative. Possible causes include alcohol or illicit drug use, brain injury and hypoxia due to airway compromise. Assess GCS and pupils. Lateralizing signs that may indicate an associated brain injury may be present. Exposure. Check for signs of other major and immediate life-threatening injuries and manage appropriately, such as the lethal 6 and hidden 6. This includes airway obstruction, tension pneumothorax, open pneumothorax, massive pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade and flail chest for the lethal 6, and tracheal bronchial injury, esophageal injury, pulmonary contusions, blunt cardiac injury, blunt thoracic injury and diaphragm rupture for the hidden 6. B. List the options for securing the airway in this case and any advantage or disadvantage of the methods. Options include rapid sequence induction, awake fiber optic intubation and awake tracheostomy. RSI. This is the preferred option as the patient is uncooperative and has full stomach. Preparation includes video laryngoscope, full difficult airway trolley availability, skilled assistance and presence of ENT colleague. Plan B is supraglottic airway device. Plan C is surgical cricothyroidotomy or emergency tracheostomy. Advantages of RSI. This includes rapid securement of the airway, minimal patient cooperation is required, maximum protection of airway from contamination by blood or full stomach. Disadvantages include potential for difficulty intubating the patient once the patient is rendered apneic. It may not be possible to wake the patient up again depending on gas exchange and level of consciousness. There is a need for availability of full range of airway adjuncts. Nasopharyngeal airway is contraindicated due to risk of base of skull fracture. Fractures may be associated with damage to other parts of the facial skeleton. Interference with movement of coronoid process of mandible by depressed zygomatic complex may limit mouth opening. Awake fiber optic intubation. Advantages include maintenance of spontaneous ventilation. This is useful in distorted anatomy. Disadvantages of AFOI include specific skills required, does not protect airway from contamination, requires patient cooperation, requires transfer to theater, for potentially unstable patient. The view may be obscured if there is airway bleeding and there is need for appropriate equipment. Awake tracheostomy advantages includes avoidance of potential difficult airway. Disadvantages require skilled surgeon, patient cooperation and skilled anesthetist. C. 
What are the problems that should be anticipated before securing the airway? Pre-oxygenation, uncooperative patient, mask may not fit well, causing pain due to fracture. Pre-oxygenation may be done in a sitting position for patient comfort. Consider high-flow nasal oxygen. Next is difficult laryngoscopy due to distorted anatomy, obscured view due to blood, neck immobilization. Hence, there is a need for difficult airway trolley, senior anesthetic assistance and possibly ENT or maxillofacial assistance. Airway contamination due to blood, teeth or full stomach. Small diameter endotracheal tube should be available and left uncut due to potential for significant swelling. Cardiovascular stability may be compromised by other injuries. Ensure availability of resuscitation drugs, fluid boluses and full monitoring. Drugs. There is potential for interactions of anesthetic drugs with alcohol and illicit drugs. Comorbidities. History may be limited due to uncooperative patient. Additional information. Examiner's report. It should be noted that securing the airway using a laryngeal mask airway as primary technique was not part of the model answer. Perhaps a rapid sequence induction would be plan A rather than an inhalational induction to achieve definitive airway. Anesthesia for fractures of the orbitozygomatic complex. This procedure involves elevation of the fractured zygomatic complex with or without fixation. Typical duration is 10 to 180 minutes. Pain is moderate. Position is supine with head up tilt and head ring. Blood loss is minor but may be more if internal fixation is performed. Practical techniques include oral ray tube and IPPV or LMA with spontaneous ventilation for simple elevation. Introduction. Fractures may occur in isolation or be associated with damage to other parts of the facial skeleton. Interference with movement of the mandible may limit mouth opening. Following elevation, the fracture may be stable or unstable and require internal fixation. Unstable fractures require plating or wiring via skin or intraoral incisions. Preoperative. Assess for associated injuries, particularly neck and head injuries. Treatment of these fractures does not have high clinical priority unless there is ocular compromise from retrobarbar hemorrhage. The surgery is often easier 5 to 7 days later when facial swelling has reduced. Ensure careful airway assessment is done. Perioperative. Airway. Intubate the patient with an oral ray tube. For simple fracture elevations, a flexible LMA may be used, but discuss with the surgeon whether open fixation of the fracture is planned. Airways may dislodge during surgery and vigilance is required. Lubricate and protect the eye on the non-operative side. Give antibiotics according to local protocols if metal work is to be inserted, such as co and moxiclef 1.2 grams or clindamycin 600 mg, and steroids such as dexamethasone. Be prepared for potential bradycardia due to vagal stimulation when the zygoma fracture is reduced, also known as Gillis lift. Routine use of throat packs is not recommended. If they are used, they should be placed by the surgeon and a robust system should be in place to ensure that they are not inadvertently left in situ. This includes discussion at timeout, a visual reminder, confirmation of removal at sign out swap count and clear documentation. Extubation. Extubate when the patient is breathing spontaneously. Do not apply excessive pressure over zygoma with the face mask post extubation. There is a risk of aspiration of blood and debris. The oral pharynx and larynx should be suctioned at the end of the case, preferably under direct vision. The patient should be extubated sitting at 30 to 45 degrees propped up to reduce bleeding from venous congestion or in the left lateral position with head down tilt if there is high risk of airway soiling. Extubation techniques in general for oral or maxillofacial surgery. Some anesthetists extubate the patient using a deep spontaneous breathing technique. Some exchange the endotracheal tube for an LMA and allow the patient to wake up slowly in the recovery. Others prefer to extubate awake. Whichever technique is used, the aim is to avoid bleeding and swelling caused by coughing and straining. The use of nasotracheal tube or LMA, which do not stimulate the gap reflex as much as an oral tube, facilitates smoother extubation. Consider spraying the vocal cords with lidocaine at intubation. 
if a nasal tube has been used, it is possible to convert it into a nasopharyngeal airway by withdrawing it until the tip lies in the oropharynx, inserting a safety pin to prevent the tube from slipping back into the nostril, and cutting at the 15 cm mark. Post-op, IV opioids may be required in recovery. Prescribe oral analgesia for the ward. Eye observations in the recovery and on the ward to detect post-op retrobalbar hemorrhage, which would require a return to the operation theatre. Anesthesia for mandibular fractures. This involves reduction and fixation of a fractured mandible. Operation duration is typically 1 to 3 hours. Pain is moderate. Position supine with head up tilt and head ring. Blood loss is variable. Group and hold is usually not required. Practical techniques include nasal tube and IPPV. Fiber optic intubation may be required. Mandibular fractures may be treated by close reduction and indirect skeletal fixation or open reduction and direct skeletal fixation using bone plates or rarely external fixation. Preoperative. Ensure careful assessment for associated injuries. Perform meticulous airway assessment. There may be severe trismus and marked soft tissue swelling. Check nostril patency and ask about epistaxis and the use of anticoagulants. Discuss the choice of airway with the surgeon. Check for evidence of basal skull fracture and CSF leak. These may contraindicate nasal intubation and require discussion with a specialist neurosurgical center. Perioperative. Nasal intubation, tracheostomy or submental intubation. As the surgeon cannot work around an oral airway, nasal intubation is frequently used to improve surgical access to the mouth, facilitate x-rays and allow assessment of bite alignment. Acute trismus makes intubation look potentially difficult preoperatively, as mouth opening may be markedly limited, but this tends to relax following induction. Patients with older fractures and those complicated by infection tend not to relax as much. Mark swelling may make intubation more difficult. A weak fiber optic intubation may occasionally be required. Bilateral mandibular fractures allow increased anterior jaw displacement after induction, but airway maintenance by face mask is not always easy due to swelling and loss of jaw structure. An RSI may be appropriate with saxamethonium or rocuronium have Sugamadex available 16 mg per kg. Gas induction and effective pre-oxygenation may be more difficult due to pain when applying the face mask. If the nasal route is chosen for intubation, use local anesthetic and or a vessel constrictor mixture such as lidocaine 5% with phenylephrine 0.5% or xylometazoline. Ivory preformed north-facing nasal tube from Portex is ideal. These pre-shaped tubes are made of soft material and cause little nasal trauma. Sizes of 6.0, 6.5 and 7.0 mm should be available. Place the nasal tube in warm water before use to soften the material even further. The tube should be padded with gauze to protect the patient's forehead. Consider fixing the endotracheal tube, nasogastric tube and temperature probe with clear adhesive film. Avoid excessive tension or pressure on the ala margin of the nose which risk necrosis, recheck periodically. Protect the eyes with tape or eye pads, or surgically position plastic contact lenses. Position the patient with the head at the opposite end to the anesthetic machine. A long breathing circuit and gas analysis or spirometry lines are normally required. Secure the breathing circuit with tube holder. Ensure the pilot cuff is accessible and clear from the eyes. Stabilize the head with horseshoe or head ring. Position the patient slightly head up to reduce bleeding. Post-op. This is as for patients having maxillary or mandibular osteotomies. Some units send these patients to HDU. Some send them to the normal ward after extended period of observation in the recovery. Administer humidified oxygen. Ensure all oral analgesics are prescribed in soluble form. PCA or IM opioid should be prescribed. Ensure prophylactic antibiotics and steroids postoperatively as per unit protocol. These drugs are typically given for 24 to 48 hours. Prescribe IV fluids and encourage the patient to take fluids by the oral route as soon as possible. Thank you.